and howl about America and democracy. There is no America. There is no democracy. We no longer live in a world of nations and ideologies. The world is a college of corporations, inexorably determined by the immutable bylaws of business. The world is a business. And I have chosen you to preach this evangel. For all my free market health care, robbing, stock stealing, retirement fund, fucking with niggas. Fuck your little credit card scam and jewelry stealing, crack selling, liquor store robbing motherfucker. <laughs> Shout to the homies, Carnegie, OG, Willie Randolph Hearst, Baruch, Rockefeller, the real Rockefeller, my main bitch, Leona, part of Little Louis XIII, Scott Rothstein, Jack Abramoff, hold your head, my boy, yeah. stop niggas, let's uh, get this money. I spend my day pepper in America overseas, pension for the workers, nigga, please, embezzlement, etiquette, private settlement, I'm better with Confederate rhetoric from my mansion in Connecticut, for clothes of the clothes out of tenement, I twist words like a speech impediment, I hope you got good credit, bitch. Get a new job with benefits while I play golf with niggas to get cheddar with. New money buys brand new carrots. My old money bust your great grandparents. You got grills in your mouth, I ain't mad at you. I own every gold mine in South Africa. Thanks, baby, you made me a billion. Plus, I own a building. But each one of my children's children, that's the shit. Smart coke in the whip, miss USA sucking my dick. Yeah, what? Fuck the law, cause real jailers for suckers. I go to country club prison, you dumb motherfuckers. I am the one who said, fuck you. Job in a house and a bank account when I'm out. I doubt that's something you could say. And if not, then a fake death like Kenneth Lay. Make money every day. The world burns on its access. Why y'all struggling to pay taxes? I'm getting my money the fastest. Memos and faxes, shredded up documents. Slush funds through the corrupt continents. But they don't want me indicted. Cause they don't want my dirty laundry aired when I fight it. So get my lawyers excited. Cause what good is the law if you can't rewrite it? I got the IA traders, dictators. So fuck y'all whistleblowers and haters. from Al-Qaeda in the bank 9-11 widows go too late to capitalism so I pray to fuck the state of the world money talks so what the fuck I need to say to you girl I don't pay them to fuck I pay them to leave you know my CEO for receive greed I treat countries like the IMF down on your knees real gangsters run the world fuck what you believe I cut down the forest while y'all niggas burn it I'll get your family murdered for a couple of G's Cause your working class money ain't fucking with me You think rappers are rich cause the songs you heard My labels make the money and haven't rapped a fucking word Yacht in the ocean coasting with the sails out Hey America, thanks for the bailouts I made off at Tobago and Brogiano Got away scot free like El Vaticano Activist, activist, get mad at me cause I'm a tax free charity 80% to the staff and company and 20% to the homeless and hungry, the country gotta pay the Fed Reserve. Kick back to the banks, this haven't you learned? You protest cops and patrols on the street, but I bought city hall, so I own the police. Email, Facebook, and a shit you tweet. All the phone companies, so I heard you speaking. My suggestion is no correction, no election, sex with no affection, no invention to benefit the world of man. Will exist till I got the money in my hand. World Bank, interest rate, damn rate on a spot. But I'm a gangster, you gon' take my money like it or not, nigga. Got your country in my pocket, motherfucker. You know my CEO makes Sonic Steve cheese. Only little people pay all these taxes and fees. Since you were born, we control what you watch and you read. And pretty soon we're gonna own the fucking air that you breathe. I take what I want, fucker. I don't have to say please. I convince you that it's good for you. Take it and leave. You think presidents are the face of a nation? Put them all where they are. End of the conversation. <laughs> all right, all right. Hello, hello. Seth, you there? Yeah. That's, what's up? Not much. Uh, had to start us off with a little uh, Immortal Technique. That song is called Rich Man's World off the Marta album. album was actually released in 2011, but... Uh, <laughs> 
it rings true today, uh, considering, you know, things going on in the world and America. Uh, how's it going across the pond there? Huh? Yeah, pretty pretty good, man. The weather's okay. Uh, not crazy too much going on over here. They, they still focusing on the Brexit business and European politics and stuff. But, you know, society as a whole is cool. A lot of black um, writers coming through with some new stuff. And um, I think you could say that the conscious woke community is strong. Europe and the UK and lots of connections to the African heritage. So it's good, as they say. Things are all good. Not crazy. Not too crazy to report. All right. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, what's, the, what's the hot topic? What's the hot movie out there uh, in uh, London? The hot movie? Yes. What is that uh, I think talking? Star Wars has to take that um, oh. thing. You know, because they had the, the the Justice League came out and that kind of fizzled. I mean, I liked it, but uh, I think maybe a lot of people didn't like it. Then not too long after that, the Star Wars came and Star Wars has done pretty well, you know. And I, have you seen it? Oh yeah, definitely. I say it's like one of the biggest box office uh, movies uh, of the. Of the year or something like that. I mean, Star Wars yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so how did you find it? Uh, you know. Uh, I I I'm, I have mixed feelings about it. We talked about it quite a bit uh, last week, uh, but uh, I thought it was a good movie. Um, it's definitely action packed, and you know, in that respect, it was really good. But as someone who was a fan of. Star Wars genre and that whole universe, um, I definitely found it lacking. I think yeah. um, it's, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a good movie. If you're not into Star Wars and you not, like didn't really know too much about it and you went to see it, it was, it was a great movie. I gave it a B, B plus. But uh, as far as like Star Wars like fan, I give it a C minus. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I kind of yeah. to say. I mean, I I, I don't consider, my, consider myself a, a Star Wars like a mega fan, but I've watched all the movies and I got a particular love for certain movies, especially the original ones, the older ones. Um, Rogue One was really good. Yeah. I think the the line the lead into this was pretty good, the build up, but um, I think the end was very disappointing. You know, um, they tr- the storyline was interesting and the, you know the special effects were really good. But um, as a sci-fi movie, I guess you could say it was okay. But you know, they kind of they kind of fizzled out at the end. You know, it's a great big build-up, and then the, then kind of fizzled out. So I mean, maybe they're just doing it so they can hopefully uh, rerun it again and do it another you know another version of Star Wars. So keep the money flowing, as they say. Right. I mean, uh, man, it's made over nine hundred million so far. I think that's just in the U.S. But. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think, like, when you mention Rogue One, and then you think about this movie, you're like, yo, there's a disconnect, there's something missing because... Night and day. Night and day. Because that... Yeah, You know yeah. the funniest thing, man? After the, the, you know, the CGI mess they made with a lot of the, the, the last Star Wars movies, you know, you kind of felt, ah, you know, maybe it's a franchise on its knees, or, you know, then Rogue One. And what's the other one that had the... Um, Rogue One, what was the other one? Uh, there was just two movies before this. Huh? I I only know of Star Wars, uh, Rogue One, and then I mean, uh, what is it? The The Force Awakens and the Rogue One. That's the one. Force Awakens. They weren't too bad, you know, and that 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 really kind of made me think, yeah, you know. So leading into this with Skywalker and all these things, I was thinking, man, this is they're gonna really, you know, bring bring it like a crescendo, you know, like um the big the big finale kind of thing, right? Know? It uh, wasn't to be, you know, <laughs> it wasn't to be. And I don't know if it's because of the big build up, but it just felt like night and day, like the way they dropped the, you know, Rogue One and uh, The Force Awakens. Yeah, there was some new stuff they dropped in there, some good, interesting new stuff, the new generation. Uh, but it was, it was, that's about the most decent thing I think that's uh, out there right now. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have no expectations. <laughs> for the next one so I mean I think in that respect that's a good thing because uh, I don't think like I said I have no expectations for the next one I'll I'll check it out just to like w- 
watch it culminate and see how they finish it up or whatever. Obviously, they'll probably try and extend it. But um, you also mentioned Justice League, uh, and then there's also Thor Ragnarok out there. So I mean, uh, we have we haven't been on in a while, so we didn't really get to touch on Thor Ragnarok or Justice League. Well, to be um, fair, I, we, we I mean, last year we did the reviews at the end of the, the, the yeah. I mean, we're not too far from the end of the Gregorian calendar anyway for right. 2016. So we. You know, I think it's value to do, you know, some reviews of what we thought were good this year because there was quite a lot of movies, actually. You know, yeah. We had a, quite a lot of movies. The Get Out was this year, and that, to me, you know, it, at the time there was a lot of noise around it, but I, I think that was quite a groundbreaking movie, you know? Oh, yeah, I definitely think Get Out was groundbreaking, uh, which was the Keenan. Keenan. That's, Keenan that's right. Uh, yeah. So, Peel, like uh, he definitely broke out that movie, surprised a lot of people. Like, you know, one thing, one, you know, we still live in a world of stereotypes and of like, oh, you know, uh, you know, black people can't do this or those types of movies won't work. And I think he proved with the Get Out that you know, black people can write horror, and uh, which is a dumb, I mean, stereotype anyway, and that we will support it, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that Get Out movie definitely was groundbreaking. It was uh, it was great on a, a lot of different levels. That's right, and I think what impressed me was it was so well put together and so well accepted. You don't usually have the two. I mean, my wife and myself we were watching a couple of movies today. You know, some um, I think there's a movie called No Regrets. There's a few movies we was watching, and you know, prominent black um, you know actors and actresses. They used to see it on the big screen, et cetera, you know, doing these movies, obviously to to keep, a, you know, to keep keep the food on the table, to keep their craft up, right? Right. But Get Out was kind of that kind of a movie that you could easily have seen as a straight-to-DVD type of movie, you know? Like, it wouldn't have looked out of place as a, a movie that you rent or catch on Netflix or, do you know what I mean? But oh, yeah. actually, it came mainstream and was well-received, and I think they said he made like a... I don't know if it was a hundred million in total or a hundred million on the first weekend. One of the two, I think a hundred million on the first weekend. And that's quite an impressive buzz, you know, for such a movie. And I think what was so interesting was that it was, it was a, a thoughtful movie. It was a movie that I think everybody pretty much can relate to in some aspect of it, even whether you're on the, 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 you know, whichever side of the fence you're sitting on, you know, there's a story in there that you can relate to in some of that movie. But, yeah, I was kind of pleased because it, it opens the doors for people like, you know, and Den Aran, who makes movies for, you know, a certain type of mindset. You know, you don't have to totally be Hollywood-fied to put those kind of movies out, you know? Right. Definitely. definitely. Uh, yeah, and I applaud them for, um, I applaud them for that. And, uh, you know, you have the Oscars coming up and uh, with Get Out nominated. I don't even know. Like, I'm, I'm, I think they put it in the category of comedy. Oh, no, I think it was I actually it. nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, but isn't that in the? I heard something through one of the forums I read that some that's under the category of comedy or satire or some some crap like that. No, no, it's up for Best Picture against uh, Call Me Call Me by Your Name, Dunkirk, The Florida Project, Get Out. Lady Bird, The Post, okay. Shape of Water, and Three Billions Outside Ebony, Missouri. I don't know. But it is, it's up for Best Picture. So I think that, that shows a, a hell of a lot that Jordan Peele, yeah. you know, Jordan Peele is nominated uh, on his first foray into feature films at, for Best Picture. You know what I mean? That'd be good to see how he does. I mean, Oscars don't really make much difference to your craft but you know let's see if he if he gets that you know the nod yeah i mean i definitely think you know it'll, it'll help him going forward in uh in making other movies and it'll i guess uh give lend the credibility to anything he chooses to put out but uh you know yeah i don't think you know especially in the black community i think we've been uh scorned so many times by or the indigenous community i think we've been scorned so many times by uh uh, the Oscars and, you know, in the previous years, there, there were so many issues with it. It's good to see that, uh, you know, that they're actually up for uh, awards, uh, including best writing, original screenplay, um, uh, film editing, 
You know what I mean? So uh, I think that's good. And I'll... it's a, it's a good sign. So let me let me tell you. I mean, I, I'm 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 fortunate enough to have a list in front of me. So I've, I'm sure you got your list somewhere. So my I'm not going to do no I'm not going to do no top ten, top five, none of that you know crap. But I'm gonna give the, the movies I watched this year and really enjoyed or you know really thought was something memorable. So obviously Get Out. Um, Wonder Woman, I know you have your thoughts on that, but I actually was surprised by how well that was put together, especially. Um, I Thor, I enjoyed, but I know many people feel that was the best Thor, but I kind of like the first and second more. I, I felt they tried to do too much of the Guardian of the Galaxy type of thing with this one. Justice League, I guess I'm just a comic head. I don't know. I don't get the heat. I don't get the hate. I just like. I just liked it, man. Aquaman. Uh? Oh, Justice League? Justice League. Yeah, man. I, I, I went and saw it, man. So when it first came out, I was hyped. I was a fan. You know, you, to have Cyborg, you know, Flash, Batman, Aquaman on the same, on the screen, I was just happy. I was just happy. I know when you compare it to Marvel stuff, then it might come un- unstuck. But I guess as a, a, a fan of Justice League, I was pleased. I mean, I would have loved to see Green Lantern. I thought Superman was a bit, you know, a bit crazy. Some of the CGI was a bit off, but I, I, I wasn't one of the haters, put it that way. Uh, okay. War of the Planet of the Apes, I was quite surprised, quite pleased, man. I, I enjoyed that movie. Obviously, Guardians 2. Logan, crazy film this year. Crazy film, real. Really pleased they finally put it together for the man. because That's one of my favorite characters ever in comic land. We had Spider-Man Homecoming. That was all right. It was good. It was, it was entertaining. Alien, Covenant, crazy film, crazy film. would like to hear your thoughts on that if you caught it. Detroit, that's a good, you know, it could have been done better, but, you know, good movie. Shout out to my kids, Lego, Batman movie. They <laughs> love to death, so I can't complain. Kong Skull Island, I, I was one of the best King Kong movies I saw, personally. I, I really enjoyed that. And that's kind of me, man, for the year. I, I don't, you know, it was, I saw a lot of movies, but a lot of them didn't make that impression on me, man. So what about you, man? What did you see in review? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there were a lot of good movies in 2017. And, you know, just like the Oscars, I think uh, a lot of people's uh, opinions are shaped by what they saw last. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So that is, uh, so unfortunately, a lot of movies, you know, um, lose out because of, and like, we forget about those movies because it's like, oh, what did we, what did our last see? You know? What's next? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, for me, uh, yeah, I really like, there's a one that you didn't mention uh, that I think definitely should have been, for me, should have been. Uh, is is one of my top movies of 2017. That's Valerian, the City of a Thousand Planets. Like that movie you know what? I take you. <laughs> I I, I kind of my wife saw that and I kind of skipped it and I don't know why, but I didn't I didn't catch it. But I'm a you you was you enjoy that movie this year? I thought that it was probably one of the best movies of 2017 that didn't get very much um, press Fine, or yeah. you know accolades. I think uh, it create it was it. it you know, it's based on a series of books or graphic novels or something like that, and it, it has its own universe. But it definitely had that feel of the fifth element, and okay. a, uh, more in a more a little more serious, a little in a, a little more relevant way. Like you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I definitely got to give that movie lots of props for that. Especially having to go up against, you know what I mean? Uh, some of the heavy hitters in the superhero like Marvel and DC movies. It definitely stood out. Uh, you know, Kong Skull Island, best Kong, best um, King Kong movie I have seen to date. Like honestly, you like that movie? Yeah, I thought I it was. It. I thought it was. I thought they did a really good job on Kong. I thought, like you know what yeah. I mean? That's like a hard one, especially today as well, right? It's kind of a hard we, one. We, we we kind of have a lot of similar tastes in movies too, man. Because we never talked about this movie, but. Man, I ate that movie up. I thought Samuel Jackson did a turn. He did a real... His character was fierce. Yeah. And how they put Kong versus the creatures and the... Man, that was like... Um, 
not anime so may, but you know, there used to be those kind of comics or cartoons back in the day, isn't it? Like, you know, Godzilla and those type of things, man. So real entertaining. Right. Yeah, I love that movie. And then, um, uh, so, I mean, obviously, you know, a couple of others that just kind of touch on sci-fi, Hidden Figures, you got to give that props. Uh, yes. I think yes. that was a story that was... That was Fences beautiful. this year as well? Yeah, yeah, that was this year. That was, I uh, love that movie too. Yeah, sorry, man, that's that's okay. Shout out to Denzel for Fences, man. That was a real story, real good story. Yeah, I think Fences was actually, like, the end of last year that one came out, but... Fences was definitely great. I mean, I know that's not sci-fi, uh, but it, it was, you know, it's figures because you know it deals with NASA and space. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, and then you know, obviously, you talk about the big blockbusters. You have Wonder Woman. Um, I personally, I did not see that in the movie theater. I did see it after the fact, where I didn't have to pay for it. And <laughs> I mean, I just was not, I just was not um, impressed. I thought. Um, there's still some, like, you know, holes, like, you know, like everyone talks about, like, how, like, she, it, how she's, like, trying to, you know, write evils and this and that, but when she talks to the Native American dude and asks what happened to his people, and he's like, oh, his people killed my people, <laughs> and then she just, like, goes quiet and is like, you know, let's move on. Like, let's not really discuss, like, that evil right there. You know what I mean? Mm. So I had issues with the Wonder Woman movie. Um Spider-Man Homecoming, I thought that was a great movie. Um, that was a good reboot for, you know, Spider-Man being in uh, Marvel Pan. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So I gave that definitely a lot of props. Uh, Michael How did Keaton, you feel about the Tony Stark's angle, though? That was a thing that kind of... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I think we talked about this before. Like, uh, I think Robert Downey Jr. does an excellent job. Uh, no, of I'm Tony saying Stark. I agree with that on, on his side, but I'm saying the, the the movie was kind of a lot about his relationship with Starks and the suits and all these type of stuff. And I maybe I'm a bit too traditional with Spider-Man, but I don't remember that connection so much in the comic books. Well, I mean, if you um, so if you remember Marvel Civil War, they brought up the Sokovia thing and. Uh, Right, and if you if you've ever if you read the comic book, the Marvel Civil War, uh, Stark and Spider Man's relationship is kind of just like that, except Spider Man is uh, Peter Parker is a lot more mature, and the relationship uh, uh, is hinged on him coming forth to the world as Spider Man, revealing his secret identity, and um, Stark helping him out with the suit, with a better suit and everything. And, uh, so in that sense, it, it was kind of true to the Marvel Civil War timeline mm. Of, mm. of of the movie. You know what I mean? So that didn't bother me so much. Okay. I thought Michael Keaton did an excellent job as the Vulture because that character yeah. had never yeah. had very much weight with me. I'm like, yeah. the Vulture, like, how is this going to be the bad guy? Um, but Keen Woodbine did a really good job. Like, I just thought it was a well-acted movie, definitely. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. They definitely did a really good job with that movie. It, mm. um, uh, and then so yeah so I give that props right there uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 I was not impressed with that I thought it was great visually it just isn't one of my favorites for the year I was kind of disappointed in that movie mm. um, you know what I mean I was kind of disappointed uh, I thought uh, Logan was awesome I thought damn they finally did it right yep. it sucks that that's the last one I mean, I thought I had issues with some of that, some things in the movie, like, you know what I mean? Like how they ended it and everything. But uh, I thought they did an excellent job overall with... Uh, Hell yeah. And I tell you what, I know what you're saying about it's the same as the final one, but in my mind, as a true, you know, like as a Wolverine fan and stuff, that was, that's the only movie. Like, those others are so <laughs> bad. I don't even count them. Like, they finally just did right. the movie right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what they were, it's like and you, it's funny actually. It's like the Spider-Man part. That that I can't remember that dude's name, but the, the Sony one, the two they had was that's kind of wiped up my memory as well because it was so bad, you know. Right, right. I can only just maybe just about take the what's that young I, I can't remember that guy's name, but that um, the first three that was done with that. Um, yeah, I forget his name. I yeah, it. Toby Maguire. That's it. He did the three. Oh, those, yeah, those are definitely white. I think of the other dude more than I think of, like, Tobey Maguire. Like, the newer I mean, ones? 
the Sony yeah. ones. You like those yeah. better than the Tony Maguire ones? No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, to, the Toby Maguire, like, the first one was good because, like, yeah, you know I, what I mean? Oh, like, you finally seen it, like, done well on the screen, but, like, the others were not. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that those movies. Like, all right, we, we, we leave that so, as a jewel because, but I think the Homecoming is the better of all of them anyway, so far, so. So far, so yeah, good. Man. And then, I mean, Justice League, um, I did see that. Like, again, I didn't go, uh, I saw it, you know what I mean? I didn't go pay money to see it. I saw it after the fact. Um, I thought it was a decent story. I thought, uh, man, I really like Ben Affleck as um, as Batman. I know, right? I, he's not bad. He's not bad. Yeah, he think he does the job. I think he does the job really well. Um, I like the whole... I like the movie. I think uh, that it suffered from them not being like Marvel, but they don't need to be like Marvel. But I think it suffered from the fact that if you weren't a true comic head, you would probably think that movie was boring. Like, you would be like, oh, what is all this? It's taking too long to do anything. But, mm-hmm. like, they did a good job of laying out who everyone was and where they came from and connecting them. And um, yeah. uh, the action was good. So I, I like Justice League. I don't think it's like in my tops for the year, nah. but it definitely um, redeemed itself from the Superman vs. Batman. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Your, it was your mother's much name is Martha? My mother's name is Martha. Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it was the, the Justice League definitely watchable. I wouldn't rewatch, but it's kind of reminds of the new post Dark Knight DC world where everything is kind of like the Superman reboots and stuff. They're kind of possible. They're not, you know, nothing is, nothing I'm thinking about buying add to my DVD collection, but it's watchable right. first time, you know, it's, 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 it's decent. Did you, I, I'm, I've never checked, you Alien fan? Did you like the, did you watch Alien Covenant? I didn't watch Alien Covenant. I heard too many bad things about it. And I'm, I'm I like, I like the original Alien. Um, you know what I mean? I like a few of the Alien movies. There's a couple that I like, you know what I mean? And, uh, like, I think it was the one with Nona Ryder. I like that one. I like the original one. Um, but, like, I'm not a tr- big, like, Alien vs. Predator. I like that first one. Um, but I'm not a big Alien fan. So, and I, then the I, last I, one they did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, I was going to say, like, I, me neither. But I'm, I'm kind of, I guess from the whole sci-fi space cadet kind of mindset I know of. Do you know what I mean? I know mm-hmm. the theories, the concepts. And it was what I was intrigued about with the reboot, not the reboot, but a continuation, I guess. So what, what is it supposed to be? A prequel, actually, isn't it? It's all supposed to be. Yeah, what it is it? Started. It takes place after that last one with um, Charlie Theron, where she could, she ran in a straight line, and there's like this thing rolling. <laughs> and roll over, and but I'm saying is that all, this, really at all. all of this mm-hmm. is supposed to be the, before the first one in 79 or 76, whatever it was. All of this is the prequel. This is the build up. This is how they came into being. So from the sci-fi, you know, kind of geeky, you know, space cadet kind of mindset, that's what's intrigued me about this group. Of, I think it's the, this is the third or second one now. Um, and it's more, of a, it's more of an intellectual kind of approach than the old original ones where more where they were shoot them up, shoot them ups. So that's what's intrigued me with this one. So the storyline can be sometimes a bit sterile, but it's one of those ones. I think the previous one, when they had the creators in there, I actually even watched that two or three times. That's how deep the storylines were. Yeah. So I think it's one of those things that, yeah, as, apart from the gore, there is an interesting line of, because supposedly in the storyline, it talks about germination and stuff. And obviously those creators were supposed to be the creators of the human race and the alien race. You know, Prometheus was the pre first one of this prequel journey. So it intrigued me in that sense, in terms of trying to, you know, we all used to the, you know, the the, the 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 ones that bust out your gut and all these type of things, but they they're trying to break down the different types, how they came into being, the radicalization of the gene and how it, it's quite, you know, I think it's sophisticated in that sense, but it is um, I guess it's it's one of those things that yeah, you have to kind of want to see and understand it, you know, if it's just for a movie's sake, it's kind of a bit of a a bore and a, a gore fest, I think. But I think there's some science in there that you would like if you sat down and, you know, your mind sit, sit down and rewatch, especially Prometheus, man. I think you'd, when you, and there's a video, actually, there's a video that helped me, a YouTube video 
that helped break it down, and that's what even got me more intrigued. I'll find it, and I'll send you the link. Oh, uh, yeah, please do that. Then I'll, you know, uh, perhaps I'll go back and check it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then what else? We Obviously, Get Out was a great movie. I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. I look forward to more movies by Jordan Peele. Um, mm. uh, and then the Apes. Planet of the Apes, great movie. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed uh, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, I think it did. Like, I'm a big Planet of the Apes fan. Like, I have all the old original movies. Okay. Um, so I really enjoy that. I, you know what I mean? I remember watching the cartoon and, like, you know what I mean? Mm. I just think that that whole post-apocalyptic uh, type of movie, that's just my, I dig that. I dig that. So, uh, it was like, good to see that we like booted alien, and, man. Then you like the new the new group of alien. That's the kind of storyline. That's I'll, the, I'll that's check the it movie. out. I'll check it out though. But yeah, that's I mean, I thought they did a really good job with the uh, with the Planet of the Apes one. So I think they're gonna do the third, like one more. Should that should be the next one? It's gonna be tough, uh, man, because I I think this one out of I've watched everything. I, I, I'm I'm not a big fan, but I, I can remember the old ones back in the day with. I come with that guy. The, I can't remember his name now, but the the racist cowboy kind of guy. <laughs> I his name. Charlton Heston. That's the dude. Yeah, him. I remember him. As so I watched all those films many times over on the telly, um, and then obviously this first one. And I actually liked the first one of the reboot. The second one was like, nah. This is the third one, if I'm correct, right? This I is think this the, is the third one. Is, no, I thought this was the second one. This is the second one. You sure? Because Caesar yep, yep. is yep, the second one. The second one. Yep. Okay, then what was the one? Okay, well, I definitely love this one. That's all I could say. Um, definitely love this one. <laughs> Hopefully the next one, it can build up on it, man. Yeah. And then so, uh, let me see. What else do I have as a top one? I have a couple of more that did I... That they're nah, not getting mentioned. Just to say, this uh, is Thor the Ragnarok. One. Thor Ragnarok. This, this, I this is was... the third one. Sheldon, just to say, this is the third one. There's, the Rise was the first one, 2011. It was The Dawn yeah. was the second one, 2014. Really? Yeah. Okay. Rise of the Planet of the Apes 2. I think that was the one I was feeling. And I think Dawn was the one I think wasn't, I didn't feel anyway. And then there's War. I can't remember the difference between the first and second one, but. Um, it was three, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then maybe that was it. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. It was good. Uh, and the next one I was going to talk about was Thor Ragnarok. I really enjoyed that film. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. I mean, like I said, if you read the comics, and it, it's not definitely like straight line to the the comic universe, but it's definitely yeah. similar. I had, yeah. I thought uh, they did a great job of the comedic input, and yo. Everyone wants to see a Hulk movie. They're like, no, we're not making a Hulk movie. But this was like the most Hulk you're going to get outside of a Hulk movie. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was badass. Like, I thought um, they did a really good job with that. Um, it Let, me ask I mean, that, then. Let me ask you that. Did you, what did you think of Ed Norton's Hulk then? Oh, I really, like, I thought they did Ed Norton dirty. I thought Ed Norton was a great... Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, he was a great David Banner. You know what I mean? Uh, mm. Bruce Banner. He was a great Bruce Banner. And I thought he would have been excellent as the Hulk in the Marvel Universe. But I thought also he would have totally upstaged uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> so you <laughs> yeah, can't have point. like point. such a great actor. And then, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. does a great job as Tony Stark. But it, it, just, it just wouldn't work having him on screen like that because the focus would be on Ed Norton all the time because he's such a better actor. You know what yeah, I mean? He, he could act his ass off. He's a great so, actor. He made, yeah, agree totally, man. So I think that's why they actually x him out of it. Um, but like I said, I thought Thor Ragnarok was great. They mixed... Um, you ever read uh, uh, Planet Hulk? Uh, and they mixed Planet Hulk with Thor. And that was a really good job of doing that. I thought... Mm. I thought it was really good. I thought, you know, the fact that they had a lot of space stuff in it and the Guardians at the end, I think that plays true to the Marvel Universe because you have levels of the Marvel Universe, right? So we watch, you know, you have 
uh, Luke Cage and Daredevil. They're the street level type of. Um, well, Luke Cage could be more than that, but the way they play them up is, you know, Jessica Jones, Daredevil. They're the street level Marvel universe, and then you have, you know, what I'm saying the next level is like the Avengers. You know what I mean? And then that's like that's like your your global level, right? And then you have what you have in the Marvel universe. You have your cosmic level, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. And then you also have your celestial level, which is like um, Thanos and um, Galactus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's your celestial yeah. level, you know, and the watches and all of that. And I thought they did a good job of, uh, of intertwining all of those into their movie universe. You know what I'm saying? Because now you have a lot of speculation out there, uh, you know, when the, uh, the trailer for Marvel Infinity War, uh, Avengers Infinity Wars comes out, they're like, oh, is that... Is that lady who played uh, Hela in Thor Ragnarok, is that the death that Thanos is in love with? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I mean, if you know anything about Thanos' character, the whole infinity thing is he's in love with death. And so Lady he, Death, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, people were like, yo, I think the girl from R- Thor Ragnarok, that, that Hela, goddess, she's the goddess of death. And so, you know, that, you know, that lends us some speculation, whatever. But I thought Thor Ragnarok was a great movie. Um, that's a one on one, and then like I said, I did mention Get Out. Get Out is great. Uh, and then other than that, I, there's a few movies that we left off, which is funny. They did a Transformers came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's and tough. It, That's it, it, it's oh, <laughs> it forgettable. Like you like that? Um, I I thought it was okay. I thought. Transformers was okay, but it was nothing. It wasn't so memorable. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have David Walker on the line with us now. Hey, what's up? Hey, Dave. hey, how you doing? Now this is this Sorry. is the band that Sorry, knows everything late. about movies right here. <laughs> <laughs> Except for movies that have come out in the last six months, I've been way behind, man. I've been way behind. Oh, really? Yeah, I've seen, well, I, not as way behind as, as some people, you know, but, um, like, I, I just caught some of what you were talking about. Like, I didn't see the Transform- the new Transformers movie, but I, I ain't going to lie. I, I haven't seen, like, how many Transformers movies have there been? That was, like, the fifth one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw the first one, and that was enough. And then I was like, yo, I'm done. I don't, I don't ever see another Transformers movie, but... Uh, I like I still haven't seen Justice League yet, you know. Um I saw Thor and Planet of the Apes and Wonder Woman. I saw I saw quite a few of the the big ones, but um right. you know, you, for me I get to this weird place where I don't want to watch nobody else's movies. I just want to see my movies that no one's making. So it's like Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I get I get real like bitter and cynical. I'm I'm in bitter cynical mode. That's I'm like that at the end of every year. Right around the holidays. What do you think of Get Out uh, being nominated uh, for Best Picture? Oh, it, it, it is the best picture. I mean, <laughs> Get Out's the best movie I've seen this year. I've seen that more times um, than any other movie. I own it on Blu-ray. Um, I just watched it like two weeks ago again. I've probably seen it seven or eight times so far this year. And I just study it. It's 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 the one movie I've seen this year that is is closest to the sort of movie I wish I could get to make, and it's right. what I'm hoping I'll get to make at some point. But yeah, I I love that movie. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. Definitely. What do you I think of, the, of that movie? Because we were that, that talking about the significance of, you know. As you said, that's the kind of idyllic movie, really, because it, it captures everything. It tells the story from a really black perspective, but it captures all the audiences. I mean, uh, it's it's so historical in one way, and it made so much money, you know, in another way. So, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, of no, that? it was it was. Oh, go on. No, I'm saying, what do you think of the significance of that? You know, because obviously, uh, hopefully, it will open doors for similar type of movies to be well received. Uh, well, you know that that's where I get cynical, right? Because mm. um, every few years, some some movie will come along. None of them have have been as good as Get Out, but there'll always be some sort of black film 
or, or you know, or film that's marketed towards a black audience that does better than anybody expected and makes a lot of money and and the conversation is always, oh, this is the new hope, you know. Mm. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was it was straight out of Compton, um, <laughs> you know. Be, but but I I remember going back to like House Party or New Jack City mm. or or The Last Dragon. So like we, we th- this conversation happens every few years. Something mm. comes along, and does really really well, and everyone's like, oh, this is it, this is it. And then you know, no, it's not. I mean. Let, let, it's with everything that's been going on in the entertainment business this last several months, like you know, with with Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey and all these, predominantly it's mostly white guys who are just getting busted for the stuff mm. they've been doing for years, right? Mm. Right. We there's still hundreds to go through before they run out of guys in power before <laughs> they're going to start letting black folks and women and queer folks like. Get a get a real toehold, you know. Mm-hmm. We, we got a long way to go before we get rid of, like, you know, before the whole old boy network is completely dismantled. Right, right, but, right. Um, but I do think that, in terms of um, doing like 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 black filmmakers wanting to make horror films, and and not having it be like, whatever, you know, like, um, black you know, just just. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, nothing wrong with Blackula, but but that, no, no, that no, it can be intelligent. Not. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing about Get Out is like it's dope, but it's also it's just there's a level of intelligence there that that we don't necessarily get in movies like say Soul Plane or something like that, <laughs> you know, uh, right, right. and 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 um, and it's not like you know Tyler Perry's Boo or whatever that that one that came out earlier <laughs> this year was. So. <laughs> Um, I just I just like anything that 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 the de facto setting is that that we're intelligent and that we want you know we want to be entertained by things that aren't you know catering to to our lowest common denominators. Well, let me ask you a question because like uh, was it a year ago or two years ago the movie Dope came out. I don't know. Did you see yeah. that movie? Yeah. Now, that I did. I did is one of those that. movies that was, like, really well done, highly intelligent. I mean, like, you had the gangster guy. He had an onk on his shirt, and he's talking about the actual definition of what a slippery slope means, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It, the movie was just so well done, and I, I, I was like, man, this is – why is this not getting any press or – you know what I mean? Like, it didn't get talked up or anything. And I think, like what you said, like, every couple of years you get this movie that comes out. But that's also one of the ones – that just fell under the radar. That and um, Dear White People. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Dear White People got, you know, um, you know, they spun that into a TV show on Netflix. But like mm-hmm. with Dope, the interesting thing about that movie was, and I can't remember who the distributor was on it. The, I read an article at one point, like that movie made so much money, but the problem was the distributor did something really crazy or whatever and they ended up actually losing money even though they the movie itself made money and 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 nobody wants to talk about like how bad they messed that up cuz that movie cost like under a million dollars to make and right. um and it did really really well at the box office and they had they didn't do a great job of advertising so it made it made all, a lot of its money through word of mouth but they had it, – it, honestly, they probably were cooking the books because, you know, you hear about these movies making a billion dollars, and, and the producers are like, yo, we never got our money. We never got paid. You know, it's like how can a movie make a billion dollars and and ain't nobody got their money yet? And it's because it's they cook the books and, and, you know, everything's padded. And, of course, now I sound like, right. you know, I'm, I'm – you know, the conspiracy theory. Yeah, man, they're just trying to keep the money from us, but they really <laughs> are, so. No, definitely, definitely. And we have someone that should be joining us soon, uh, Dineron from Dineron Films. And he's got a movie on uh, Nep- uh, on uh, Amazon, which I suggest uh, you to check out, David. I think you'll enjoy it. It's called Diary of a Bad Man. It's playing now on Amazon. It's got okay. five stars. And he's made that movie for under, under $100,000. And uh, it's a really good movie. Really well done. He's an independent filmmaker. So hopefully he'll be joining us a little later. But yeah, I mean, I think cool. uh, I, I definitely agree with you. I think 
the distribution has a, has a lot to do with it. I don't think a lot of people understand um, that going out and supporting a movie is definitely something that they need to do, but also they need to look at, like you said, how uh, the people are handling the movie. Because uh, I don't think Dope wasn't in a lot of movie theaters. Like, I remember looking... No, it wasn't. See, looking for it, and I had to actually drive, like... Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it was in a one theater. There's like five theaters around me, and it was only in one of those theaters. And like it only played at specific times, and you know, so it made it kind of a hard movie to go see. Yep, yep. No, that, that happens a lot with, especially with smaller films, where it's like, um, especially if it's if it's what what the distributor considers to be a quote unquote black film. They're only going to play it in theaters that they feel are have a black audience, and so if 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 and and they they have this weird system of of determining the demographics of a theater, and and if they think that it's not going to do well, they there's certain cities that won't get released in, there's certain you know theaters that won't play in, all, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. They don't they that never applies. Well, it, it, it'll apply to some other movies, but it, it definitely doesn't apply to you know the bigger films. And 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 when a film somehow has a breakout, like the way Get Out did, or the way Straight Outta Compton did, and 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 when I tell people this, I point it out to them: start paying attention to the release patterns. And it's like you you know a, a black movie successful when it's playing in a theater that almost never shows black movies and it ain't nothing but white people in the audience you know right i remember i went and saw uh straight out of compton at one point uh, i because i saw it in the theater a couple times and there was one time i went the one of the theaters i went to was a theater that normally doesn't play black films and it was packed but it was all white people and i was like yo this is one and this was pretty early on i was like this movie's gonna be a big hit mm. you know because it's like and i knew it was going to be a big hit anyway because you know, NWA is big in, in places like Iowa, you know, like, like white, white teenagers back in the day loved NWA. They still love Dre. They still love Cube. Um, and, and Get Out sort of did the same thing, whereas Dope didn't get that opportunity. Um, and, I, and again, I think that was a lot of that had to do with the distributor not, not playing the game properly, not knowing what they were doing. Right, right. So uh, there's one more show I want to talk about before we like get into you, David. Is that's the Get Out? Uh, so I'm sorry, the yeah. Get Down on Netflix. The Get Down. Uh, yeah. you, did you ever get to check that out? Oh yeah, I I, I saw I saw all the episodes. Um, was I I I love the first half. There was what twelve episodes, something like that. Yeah, it was like two um, seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that first season. I was I was into I was I, I won't say it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen because it wasn't but I was I was really entertained by it I had some problems with it but that second half when they started doing the animation and everything and I right, was like right. yo this this show be, it was like it became whack overnight it was like <laughs> something out of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers where it was like um, what happened to the people that were making this the first the first episodes of this show because they're they're gone and um, I was like, and my cousin was like, yo, man, he was like, I don't know if you should watch the second half of the get down. And I was like, no, I'm going to watch it. And he was like, okay, well, you know, the first two or three episodes of the second season aren't that good. He said, but it redeems itself in the end. And I called him up and cussed him out because I was like, yo, it didn't redeem (laughs) nothing at the end. I was like, it was, it was, it was. It wasn't as bad as watching Iron Fist, mind you, but it was <laughs> it was up there, you know. Um, right. And 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 a lot of it was, uh, you know, there was aspects of that show that I loved so much, but there was never a single episode of The Get Down that I I loved from start to finish. Which is <laughs> is there's some TV shows that I love, like The Wire. I loved, you know, especially the first four seasons. There wasn't a bad episode there. Um, the get down would have like these brilliant moments, but then there would be these moments that were like, um, yo, what, like, what are they doing here? This is a little whack. And especially the second half. Right. Right. Oh, well, you know, my issue with the get down is, uh, well, one of the things is that the person who I think would produce or the showrunner 
was doing other projects. And I think part of the reason they canceled it is because it, he said he would no longer be able to do the show with, cause he, I guess it, the guy, whoever did Chicago and movies like that, he's like, he wants yeah, to yeah, concentrate yeah. on his film career. And um, my thing was like, you know, I don't think they gave it as much attention or as, uh, uh, as much a chance as they gave Stranger Things. Cause like I watched Stranger Things and I'm like, I am so not impressed with it. Like the first season yeah. was just, eh, but it had this buzz. Right. Uh, yeah. And then the second season, like to me, it was just horrible. And it's like, Oh, we can't wait for the next season of Stranger Things. But I'm like, man, the get down, the first season was awesome. The second season I'll give you was like, eh, but the, uh, I think it still warranted a conclusion to the story in a sense. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, that, and that's part of the reason I hated the second season was because it was clear they got canceled and they didn't, there's no resolution to that show. Right. You know, it, 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 it ends with like five different cliffhangers. You're like, yo, okay, right. what the one dude's been arrested. The other, or no, was he run over by the train? She's gotten on the plane He's what, you know, it's like, what's going to happen? And and then you get those title cards at the end and it was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. It was, it was really, um, I, I've never, there's very few shows that I've seen taken a, a turn, that drastic of a turn in such a short amount of time. And, you know, I haven't seen Stranger Things, the second season of that yet. I, you know, the first season I was entertained by, um, but yeah, the get down was really, I wish they'd given it another, you know, a, a bigger chance. My understanding was like the budget was was way too much, and and, um, but yeah, the the problem was I think that the second half there was just the moment they started doing them animated sequences, I was like, yo, what is this? I was like, oh, they ran out of money or or something <laughs> to do what they needed to do live action, so they were like, they're giving us this cheap ass Fat Albert stuff, <laughs> and it was just like <laughs> didn't. Didn't quite do it for me. Didn't quite no, do it I, for me. Well, did you guys get to see um, Snowfall, that John Singleton series? Haven't seen that one yet. Haven't seen that yet. Pretty stylish. I, I, I'd recommend that as well. It's, support, it's based on the story of... Um, it's similar to Dope. Isn't it like free, Freeway Ricky Ross and crack and all that sort of stuff? Basically, the start of the crack epidemic in L.A., basically. Especially in, yeah. in the context of impact on black neighborhoods so it's 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 a tv series similar to the wire similar to dope it all has similar themes but it's quite stylish and quite you know fascinating you know john singleton does his movies you know boys and her type thing he's it's it's quite good it's a good movie i mean good series to watch so you know i haven't finished the whole lot my only issue with like you know things like snowfall is it's like neo black exploitation like yeah uh it's like we're only relegated to the to you know oh we want to do serious drama then you have to do the crack epidemic and yeah like you know what I'm saying like yeah yeah and that's what I appreciated <laughs> about Get Out like you know what I'm saying is like why is it um, that like I've never seen crack in my life like you know what I'm saying <laughs> like so why I think, is yeah. that Go I ahead. think what gives credibility for me was John Singleton because I think. It's a, it's a, de- it's not great. It's not something that you think, oh wow. But it's one of those things that's worth watching just to see, for the artistry at least. I get, I know what you mean. The subject matters always seems to follow the same themes, but I see him still as quite credible, even though he hasn't done a lot in recent years. Uh, I think, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, but I get what you're saying about the, the, the. What do you say? The neo black exploitation. I, you know. I, and I, I've been guilty of it in some of my own work, so I can't totally knock it. But I sit there and, and I'm, you know, I'm developing a couple different ideas and trying to break into TV. And you know, like every meeting I have, they're like, "Oh, well, what kind of, you know, what kind of gritty crime stuff can you have?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I, I want to do like a romantic comedy, man. <laughs> you know, let me right, let right. me do some. Uh, you know, I'm 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 going back to." Like we haven't done anything like Love Jones in a while, or we haven't mm. done anything like Half Plenty in a while. Like, can't we show something? Um, like, like I'm just sort of in a you know part of it's the age that I'm at, but it's also part of the just the way the world is right now. It's like we could use a little bit of hope. We could use a little bit of positivity in the world right now. We don't necessarily need to see, especially for black folks, 
see us at our most, you know, dysfunctional. Um, but right. you know, like I mean, think about it. Well, does... it was, uh, Frank's place. Like we have. Oh a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that in forever, and like that, I think that is like the most unique show in all of te- that. In um, what's happening? The two most unique shows yeah. in all of television for me. You know what I'm and, saying? And Cause... Frank's place. It's not on video. It's not streaming. <laughs> I mean, there's garbage. I, I'm pretty sure Three's Company. I'm I'm pretty sure you can stream Three's Company somewhere, right? Right. You could get every mm-hmm. episode of Three's Company. There wasn't even. There was barely. I think there was only 12 episodes of Frank's Place. But Frank's Place, uh, a man called Hawk, with um, oh, yes. Avery Brooks. You yes, know, definitely. there there there's a couple shows, um, and then there's 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 the 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 pilots for shows that aired. Um, that never – they aired, but the shows never got picked up because um, back in the 90s, they would do that a lot. They would show the pilot as a made-for-TV movie, and um, like there was a show called Moe's World, which was um, was Tisha Campbell and and the kid um, – I can't think of his name now. He, he used to be on the Cosby show. He played uh, Bud. Um, what was his name? The, the – Dion, Dion something, um, but there was a show called Moe's World, which was like this this great pilot that I remember seeing in the '90s. Never got picked up. They did a people don't remember. They tried to turn I'm going to get you suck it into a, a TV series. They did a, um, uh, a yeah. pilot for that with and that's that had Isaac Hayes and had the with the exception of Keenan Ivory Wayne's, it had the entire cast of I'm going to get you suck it in it. You can't none, you can't find any of this stuff. Um, right. And that, you know, that always comes back to our, what I call our the history of our pop culture. A lot of it gets lost. A lot of it just gets gets forgotten. But I bring up Frank's Place all the time because that was, I think, in the top five greatest sitcoms of all time. Yeah, definitely. And then, like I said, I, I, I always give props to what's happening because, you know, unlike good times, like what's happening, um, it was always positive. Like they didn't have a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't them, like, on welfare or, like, you know what I'm saying? The dad yeah. was in the picture. The dad, the parents were divorced, so you did see the dad, right? Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the moms worked hard, and, like, all the kids worked hard, and they had, like, a, a sense of community. No one was on drugs, and they was just trying to do the right thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I always bring up what's happening yep. as one of the most prolific shows of its time, you know what I mean? For me, yeah. anyway. No, nope, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a shame that you still see. Like I think of when you mentioned yourself being in the boardroom and like pitching these ideas, and they say, or, you know, is there more of this? I think of like Hollywood Shuffle, and like that movie was made so yeah. long ago. Yeah, <laughs> so many things are still so true about it. Like, yeah. like man. Oh, it's still it's relevant. Crazy. It's still relevant. <laughs> yeah. So what what have you been up to lately, uh, David? I know like um, you've been working on. Uh, Occupy Avengers, Luke Cage, which I think you just said was canceled? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Occupy Avengers was canceled earlier this year. Luke Cage the, was was canceled. The final issue of Luke Cage comes out in February, so there's um, there's two more issues of that to go. And then um, I've written a, a Planet of the Apes series for, for Boom. That one drops uh, early January. Like first weekend, first I think the first Wednesday in January I think is when that comes out. Uh, and then I'm I'm working for this publisher Lion Forge, co-writing a book called Superb. Uh, okay. Co-writing that with with Sheena Howard and and um, that I don't even know what issue of that is out. We we just finished writing I think issue eight and and so. Um, but that's an ongoing. They, th- thankfully, that one hasn't been canceled yet. All my all my Marvel stuff has been canceled, and you know, we're t- Marvel and I are talking about maybe doing something different, or you know, a, a new series for me. But um, I'm I'm just sort of at that point in my life where it's like, okay, I can't keep waiting for for the work for hire, the freelance stuff. So I'm developing some creator own stuff. I've got a um, a book that I'm I'm doing. With Sanford Green, we did Power Man and Iron Fist together. Yes. Sanford mm-hmm. and I, and then and another writer, Chuck Brown. The the three of us are doing a book over at um at Image that will be out 
sometime uh, mid to late 2018, and that's a book called Bitter Root. So I'm keeping busy. You know, I'm hustling. It's like 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 the like the man said, every day I'm hustling, hustling, hustling. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's comics. I, I love the medium of comics. Don't get me wrong, I love the medium, but right. as an industry, the pay isn't as good as it, it. It's not for the most part. It's not enough to sustain you unless you get really, really lucky. And so I'm looking at like, okay, that's why I'm taking meetings with with folks down in Hollywood now. It's like I don't necessarily want to be down in L.A., but um, the pay is better. You know, you you sell one script in in L.A. for film or TV, you could live off of that for for close to a year. You you sell one script to a comic book publisher, and you can't even live off of that for a month. So um, it's 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 just it's sort of the it's it's like survival of the fittest. It's like well, I got to do something in order, you know. Bills got to get paid. I got family to take care of. So, um, so that's sort of what I'm looking at, just trying to figure out. But I got a couple comic projects that are that are, you know, aside from Bitter Root, that are going to be like super dope. Right, uh, and you've already uh, and we just have a, another another guest on the line right now, Jenneran Demaria. <laughs> Demaraya, Dinaran, uh, just joined us. Demaraya, 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 yes. <laughs> My hip hop hooray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Demaraya, Demaraya, Demaraya. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I just want to acknowledge that Demaraya is on the line, who I've known for like over twenty years. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I still can't seem to pronounce his his name yeah. properly. Oh, I, I, oh Kush. I oh, oh, Kush. Kush, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I call him Kush yeah. all the time. Uh, <laughs> but he's on the line. He's an independent filmmaker, David. Um, but yeah, I understand. Like, so it, you are you actually started out, at, you know, making films and writing of the genre rather than comics, right? Yeah, yeah, and and I'm and I'm going back to that. I'm gonna I'm going back to my roots in in. in 2018 for me, I turned 50 next year, and and that's part of the thing is like um, I've spent enough time doing the corporate stuff, doing that corporate grind, and I'll still keep doing it, but it's like I I, I feel like I, I got lost a little bit along the way, and and I'm not as creatively fulfilled as I want to be, and so I'm going back to my roots, and and doing the things, telling the sort of stories, and and Get Out was one of those movies that was really sort of helpful to me because you know Jordan Peele is, is probably about 10 years younger than I am and I was like yo man this this guy did it this this this, this young blood did it and I couldn't get it done you know and, and it's like it's just time to get back to what I want to do you know and, and and part of that is 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 films I, I, I want to write another novel I've written two novels now I want to I need to get another one in under my belt um, and and it's a lot of it is just I get tired of talking to people who tell me, they say, oh, well, you know, this is never going to sell. Or, you know, black people don't want this. And it's like, what do you know what black people want? You know what I'm saying? It's like, like we only want, like we're one monolithic block of people. And again, all we want are, is what Tyler Perry is offering us. No, we, we want more than that. So, um, yeah, so it, 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 it's all good. It's all good. I just need to need to refocus and, and, and remain positive. That's what we all have to do. Is, is, and sometimes it's, it's easy to lose focus and it's easy to get caught up in the negative, we, to, to go into the sunken place. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And Demaraya, uh, as, a, as a young filmmaker, uh, you have mm-hmm. uh, two films under your belt. Uh, can you, can you yeah. speak to what David is talking about? Yeah, yeah. Say it again. Can you What's speak to what David is uh, talking about as far as... You know, people telling you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's basically um, it's it's, ba- it's basically we got you know we got we got our stories to tell, and you know um, I'm like a, a go getter. I don't want to wait for nobody to um, and like like he was saying, like you know he doesn't want to wait around for someone to give you give you the opportunity. Like really, just taking things in your own hands, you know. And um, just like with the uh, two two projects I've done, I just you know I just got up in and just did them, you know, basically without much help and, um, but just with the drive and the desire to, um, you know, to get a, to get a story told, you know, and, um, just like you mentioned with like, get out, 
seeing Get Out was um, a very, very good movie. When I saw Get Out, I said, that's something I would have done. That's like, I looked at that movie and I was like, I would have done something like that, like that you know. And, um, <laughs> you know, and I think, I think many of us would do something like that. Like, like we got so much, because we haven't had the, the um, chance um, to really tell our stories, we have an abundance of work that is just, you know, we just, there's a lot that we have to give that they're not even ready for, that they, they can't even imagine, you know, because we've been held back so for so long, for so long. And the narrative was always, it's always that um, people don't want to really see, you know, black films or whatever. And that's, that's a lie because when we go all over the world, we see our co- we, we've influenced the whole world. Even like with, this, with something like hip hop, hip hop is everywhere. You got people rapping in all different languages, French, uh, in Arabic, in Japan. So people want to, people do want to see see what we have. You know, we're trendsetters. We're the ones that set the trend. You know, so um, yeah, um, it's 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 that time. It's in the air where more of us. Uh, need to get our work out there and, um, and not just wait around but uh, just do it and just like the movie I'm doing right now which is uh, The Making of a Slave which is the reversal of um, the, it's, well it's the Willie Lynch um, story or oh, backdrop but I have the white slave black um, slave owners you know and um, that's just to take it from a different perspective and funny enough um, I thought a lot of people knew Especially black people, I thought a lot of black people knew about the Willie Lynch, and what I'm finding out is that many of them don't know about Willie Lynch. They don't know about that uh, that um, story, you know. So it's um, it's it's really important to do this movie because it's going to open up a lot of people's eyes, even you know, regardless of the race. They're just going to open up that, their eyes on how that Willie Lynch process works and how it's still working today on people. You know, to all different degrees, even hip hop. Right, used, right. And uh, I think Willie Lynch is it indicative to like race. I think it, it plays across all, uh, it plays across humanity. David, are you familiar with uh, the Willie Lynch syndrome? Uh, oh, yeah. Willie Lynch yeah, syndrome? yeah. Yeah, yeah. But going back to what he was just saying, I'm no longer, nothing ever surprises me anymore when I find out somebody doesn't know about something. You know, <laughs> it's like, um, uh, you know, history. They they go out of our way. They go out of their way to not teach us history in school, and not teach us proper history. And and so many of us don't have knowledge of self, and and knowledge of where we came from and how we got here and why we continue to be stuck in the situations that we're stuck in. And and it's like that in and of itself is is the battle because it's it's not only are you fighting against a system of oppression but you're fighting in fighting against people who have bought into that system of oppression and and you know you it's all the time when you know cuz I talk to black folks all the time they'll be like oh yeah that ain't you know oh that ain't a black movie or oh man that's not black music and it's like well what do you mean it's not black music you know what what like it, it, you can't listen to you know, or whatever. It's it's the same as like people are like, oh, I love hip hop, but I don't listen to none of that dirty South stuff. And it's like, well, if you like hip hop, you should at least give something a shot and not dismiss all of it. You know, and and um, but yeah, we got a long way to go, long ways to go, and it's up to the artists and the thinkers, people like us, to to um to just keep you know keep helping people along the way. That's what it is. It's like a journey. You know, it's like, hey, let me let me show you this. You know. It's like, hey, you want, you know, I know a shortcut to the grocery store, man. You know, it's like, let's take this way. We avoid all the traffic, you know, so. Right, and I think you bring up a good point of uh, of helping each other in bringing forth these new projects and trying to, you know, create that new paradigm that, that shows that we are not monolithic. Uh, Demariah, yep. uh, uh, like, so this movie, Making of a Slave, you have actually white people are the slaves and blacks are the slave masters. Most people, when they see the trailer, they think this is just kind of like a power trip uh, and a reversal of roles, right? Yeah, some people, you know, like some people, they think it's, um, it's, a, it's a hate thing. Right? But those who really look at it and have some level of intelligence, they can see what it is. They can see what is being done. It's, it's showing how the hatred is hatred 
is put between people and how you how you make a slave, how you turn someone into a slave, someone who's mm-hmm. free, someone who is naturally, you know, like God's given the right to be free, and how do you make a person a slave? Because nobody is born a slave, you know, and, you know, the human mind will reset itself to want to be out of slavery, but um, this is shown the psycho- psychological um, way on how they made a slave. So when I often watch slave movies, I, I always thought they were hiding, they wasn't really showing you know, slavery. There was a show in the certain things in slavery which I wanted to to, to highlight. So as I was, I was actually going to do a, a black slaves and white slave owners, and it was just with me and my partner. We was talking, we was talking, and then it came up to reverse it. And I was like, yeah, that would make people pay more attention and make make it more um, apparent. You know, by by reversing the roles. And I I always like to I always like to. Uh, Come from a different perspective anyway when I'm doing stuff. So, um, like like you said, Leah, some people see it as hate, but it's it's not that. And what this movie would do is like I know what it would do. It, it will bring the it will bring to the surface <laughs> the racist in you. Like if you're if, if you look at it as a racial thing, it says something about you because it's not that. But if someone looks at this movie and and, and feels oh this is racist, it's actually a reflection on them. Because it's, it's not racist, and it's like I know intelligent people look at it and 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 understand what it is. It's, it's like one of my uh, friends; he, he's a Russian, a Russian guy, right from Russia, and um, he was like, he says like stupid people won't understand it, but he says unfortunately there's a lot of stupid people in the world. Yeah. There's, more, there's more stupid in the world, and I was like, yeah. I said maybe I should do a stupid movie, and he's like, no. He says do the movie because. You might help the stupid people become better. <laughs> right, but I think, yeah, Deborah, I think that, that you in your trailer you got a lot about the term freedom, and I think that yeah, yeah. uh, 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 you got the term freedom in a lot of your trailers. So I think that's a key theme that people are gonna. Because I'll be honest, when I first saw the trailer, I was trying to <laughs> do, you know understand on picking, but as mm-hmm. you see, as you said, the, the backdrop of Willie Lynch is very key to all of this. Because yeah. if you think about it, Willie Lynch is a real major part of history, a, me- a real major part of you know people's lives and how things change. And as you said, the, the making of a slave. So it, it's quite groundbreaking. Even though people would think initially it's like a slave story, but you actually mm-hmm. talk about psychology, you know, yeah. and actually mm-hmm. how the human mind, the fragility of the human mind. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. You know, and I think, and what it does is like it opens up the conversation. You know, because it's like it's, it's something that needs needs to be still spoken about. But I find like um, people, you know, like they play on our emotions where we don't want to use logic. Like once once someone is hurt, it's like we don't want to hear anything. So what I what tends to happen with racism is that. Um, Certain things are not racist, but we tend to say it's racism, and then it makes the real racist issues have to be swept under the rug because everything we're claiming is racism. I call it, I, I call it like you know, you want to touch something, but it has it has all thorns around it, so it's hard to touch. So if someone says to me like I, I, I'm coming from, as you know, we you know coming from London, coming to the U.S. right, and people will say, oh, are there blacks in English? They won't be white people saying that. It'll be black people ask me that, or they know I'm Nigerian, so they'll be like, you know, do they live in huts and that? So these are black people saying these things, right? And but then let's let's take that and when the white person says it, we say, oh, he's racist. It's not racism. He's just ignorant. As the black person is ignorant, they, ignorant meaning that they don't know. They they haven't traveled or they haven't read, so they haven't studied. So we're taking something that's ignorance and saying that's racist. It's hate, and it's not. It's it's, it's just like you, you you're just ignorant, and not ignorant in that you're stupid. It's just that unaware. You don't you don't know. So I've had black people and white people say similar stuff. But I know how it would be taken because of the skin color of the individual saying it. But when we look at racism, we know racism or that institution of racism or the hate or, the you know, where you now want to prevent somebody from achieving or having, you know, just, just living their, you know, freedom, their rights. Then that's the racism. That's what we want to stop. We want to stop that type of racism. We want to eliminate that. 
and it has to and it has to start with you know start with that conversation. And it's just like Dr. DeGruy says with the um, post-traumatic slave syndrome, is that not only are blacks suffering from that post-traumatic slave syndrome, but also uh, Caucasians are also suffering from it. Because where's that child that was there with the, with the lynching in the in the pictures? There's there's children. Now those children yeah. are traumatized by that. And that's and that's and it's a generational thing that's being it's carried on. It's being carried on, and the system has that and that institutionalized racism is in the system. And it's funny because doing this movie, it really makes it apparent to me how that Willie Lynch is ingrained in us, and how racism is also ingrained. Because um, I'm seeing in in blacks the Willie Lynch syndrome because they it, it, once they see some of, some of them see the trailer, they can't help but to respond with the distrust. You know, and and the the lack of support, and even to the point where they're afraid. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, <laughs> they're gonna stop you. They're gonna, they're gonna, like, they feel we we feel we we're actually now policing ourselves. Where we're not even realizing that we have we're in a new era where we can do, but we're still using the old mentality to say I need permission. A lot of times I find that we want permission. Like, who gave you permission? Who said you can do that? Like, how did you do that? How did you get your movie in the theater? Who let you do that? And I'm like, <laughs> like it's, it's crazy because, like, I'm like, I just went to the movie theater and called them and asked them how much, you know, how do I go about, you know, screening my movie in this, in this movie theater? They see me in AMC Times Square. How, how did you? And it's just like, and when, I, when I'm around, what I notice is that, you know, our training or grooming has been very is very different to white folks. Where white folks already like when when the store is closed, they don't accept that the store is closed. They'd be like, "Well, there's five minutes. Oh, well, can I speak to your manager?" But we, <laughs> on the other hand, we we'll just accept and be like, "Oh yeah, it's closed." But they push a little fur, further. But it's all dealing with training, and so that generational <laughs> thing. So even like some Caucasians that don't even realize that they. Have, that they have an element of racism there. It's just because of how they've been brought up. So when it's challenged, then it pops out. That, then that ugly monster pops out, and they're not even aware of it. And because mm-hmm. the same thing happens with black, but, but it happens on the reverse with us, where we more submissive. Like I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. Because I always find that it's black folks that are always trying to prove that they're not racist. Mm. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna try to prove to somebody I'm not racist. You can ask me, then I'll get, we have that conversation. But I'm not stepping into the arena and say, "Hey, I don't want people to think I'm racist." It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, but that's what we tend to do. Well, that's that's you just know? A, that's just wasting your time. I mean, obviously, yeah. you, you yeah. as as a black person, you've already gone through a certain level of you know mm-hmm. of whatever the, the systematic. Oppression. So why is it that yeah. I would even need to waste my time with that when mm-hmm. I could be using that uh, uh, yeah. uh, for, for better things? I want to ask David yeah. real quick. Uh, working, in, you've worked a lot in film and television and in the comic industry. You've worked with quite a few people: Hudlin, Reginald Hudlin, Quentin Tarantino. You worked at Marvel and DC. Um, do you see some of these things like, what, that Demarai was talking about playing out? Oh, every, every day. <laughs> Every single day. And it's not just like when people, you know, he was just talking about waiting for permission. People like like waiting for permission. It's also this um, – we get questioned as black folks on all kinds of things like how can we be experts on something or how can we know enough to do something or if – you know, in my case, I mean I just had this the other day, man. Some Some fool on Twitter, some white dude on Twitter was like – saying that I wasn't black, you know, like, like he, he was accusing me of being a white dude pretending to be black. Um, I I was on, I was on some, I was interviewed on this thing for, for AMC, uh, the Robert Kirkman's secret history of comics. And, and this dude just, he went, he, 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 he attacked me on, on Twitter and he was like, um, you don't have any of the attributes of of a, of a real black person. Wow. He was like, you, you don't you don't look like a black person and you don't talk like a black person. And I wow. was like, and 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 of all the things that get me, like like you can say a lot of you can talk about my mother, you can talk about my girlfriend, you can you can talk about all kinds. But if you those are the two things, if the two sore spots that that are, you know, from my childhood, the the two things that that really get to me. 
when when you know you talk about my light skin or the way I talk, I, I like I will literally take you outside and beat your ass, right? You know, <laughs> but but it, it, it's amazing because yeah, I still get this whole a lot of things where you know people expect me to ask for permission. People don't accept the fact that I know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and, and there's some other things that, that, that creep into it too that, that get really, really frustrating. And, and one of them is when, and this goes back to a lot of what we're talking about, where it's like, well, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to write stories about human beings, right? Right. And, and, and then I'll get told, you know, by some white folks and sometimes black folks too, where they're like, well, well black people don't do this. I was like, "What do you mean, black people don't do this?" You, you know what I'm saying? It's like it, it's again. There's there's these notions of um, you know of of what it is that we like, and we're only supposed to like certain types of music. We're only supposed to like certain types of films. We're only supposed to. But if that were the case, we'd be in trouble because there's there's really not enough films to sustain us. There's there's definitely enough music to sustain us, but the moment you go outside of certain types of music, you know, and I always go back to like when I was in high school, when I was in high school, everybody was listening to Michael Jackson. You know, I'm a little bit older. Um, Thriller was the big album when, like when I was in high school, but the two, the two musicians that I was listening to probably the most in high school were um, Rick James and Prince. Like nobody, no other black folks in my high school were listening to Rick James and Prince. They were all listening to Michael Jackson because that's what everybody was listening to, Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. And I was like, yo, this, these, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, they, 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 they didn't have enough, you know, they didn't have enough gravitas for me. Um, right, right. But then on the flip side, I was also listening to like ACDC and Judas Priest, and that was because the guys that, that I would go to the movies with were mostly white guys because we would go see horror movies and stuff like that. And they were these white kids who were metalheads. I'd be hanging out with them. They'd be like, hey, listen to this ACDC album. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm feeling it, you know. And again, black folks would look at me like, well, that's not what we're supposed to do. And white folks would look at me <laughs> like, well, that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm. And as I got older, I'm like, I, I don't care what any of you say. You know, I, I, I'm going to be me. And and I get into this argument with editors and publishers all the time when they're like, you know, when, I, when I'm talking to them and I'm saying, look, you've got me writing this character for you, but I'm telling you they're, they're, this is problematic. And they're like, well, we don't think it is. And I'm like, yes, yeah, because you're not a black person. Mm. It's, it's like as, right. as a man, I may write something about I – might, I might write a female character, and I might not realize that I'm being sexist. Because I don't necessarily – not everything I'm, – I'm not coming from a, a woman's point of view. I don't understand everything about women. It's why I have friends who are women writers who if, I, if I'm in question about something, I'll call them up. I'll share that with what I've written. I, I'll send them a draft. I'll go, what do you think of this? And sometimes they'll be like, mm, no, this is some sexist nonsense right here. you know. So right. then I have, to, I have to rethink it and, and – that's what we should be doing. You know, there should be more open communication and more accepting the fact that maybe I do know what I'm talking about. Maybe uh, we're having this kind con- of all of us are having this conversation about Willie Lynch, right? Which means that we have a better understanding of, of, of slavery than a lot of other people do. So if I'm talking to you about slavery and you don't know who Willie Lynch is, whether Willie Lynch was real or not, there's there's still the theory of Willie Lynch and the Willie Lynch papers. If you don't know what that is you need to admit that you don't know as much about slavery as you think you know. Exactly. Because it's still part of the slavery narrative. It's still part of the slavery history. Whether or not and Willie Lynch was real or not, doesn't matter. Right. It's still used to keep people separated and divided based on not just am I black, what level of black I am, but also, you know, uh, if you're black or white. Like uh, uh, Demaraya said, it, uh, the racism, the generational trauma created by uh, slavery – uh, affects everyone, not just yes. you don't live in a vacuum. So it doesn't just affect black people; it affects whites as well. I mean, we talked about uh, Demaria talked about us being trendsetters, and you talked about you listening to ACDC and people thinking it was weird. But you know, obviously, Bad Brains. You know what I mean? That they were oh, yeah. a punk group. 
people thought they were weird, but they were trendsetters. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a similar situation. You know, I, uh, the town I went to school in, we listened to Tribe Call Quest, but some of my friends, they listened to Led Zeppelin. But if you look at Led Zeppelin, that's taken directly from the blues. You know what I mean? So, that's all it is, uh, is the blues. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and then people would say, well, why are you listening to Led Zeppelin? I was like, well, have you listened to Muddy Waters? Like, they're basically just kind yeah. of ripping Buddy, Muddy Waters off here. So uh, yep. it's one of those things is like, we're not monolithic people. So we, you, it's more people stuck in the box and being, uh, you know, uh, adhering to those Willie Lynch uh, theories, you know, uh, that yeah. have the most issue with, with people breaking out of uh, the matrix, as you might say, you know? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, like you like you said, that's and that's that's what I always try to do. You know, my movies is like I like to fix stereotypes and just break people out of their regular way of thinking. It's funny, like you say with the music, because I worked with a guy. He was dressed like a hip hop of city cat. He didn't like hip hop. He listened to heavy metal, and he'll come in and every time he walks through the door, he'd be like, hey, 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 like you know, doing the guitar sound and you know, and yeah. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the white guy looked at me and says. Aren't you, aren't you supposed to be listening to hip hop or, you know, and it's just like people trapped in, in, in you know, just one way of thinking. And, you know, yeah. because it's like, as a, if you like music, like I know that I can listen to music from any genre and I will find something that I would like, you know, like I might not yeah. be a, um, a heavy metal head, but I know I've heard heavy metal songs that I like, you know? Right. So yep. yeah, it's like, I, I feel you definitely on that. Uh, so real quick, no, uh, to, to Mariah, I want to ask you, you uh, uh, aside from your, your uh, project that you're working on now, The Making a Slave, you have a movie on Amazon called Die of a Bad Man. And you always talk about flipping the script and, uh, and putting some sort of knowledge into your movie. Can you tell us about Die of a Bad Man? That's oh, yeah, yeah, Die of a Bad Man. Yeah, Die of a Bad Man was um, another way of flipping it where I, I always saw like um, – you know, gangster movies. Yeah, and I, I enjoy gangster movies. And um, I saw um, that whenever most of the black gangster movies, <laughs> the, you know, the the, um, the gangsters a lot of times didn't have no substance. They didn't have no real cause. And it was always, like, kind of reckless. But when you looked at, like, the um, Godfather movies and stuff, they had a sense of honor, a sense of, like, purpose. And, you know, it was more, it was more kind of, like, acceptable. And I said, you know what, I want to do a gangster movie where I, like, change that stereotype where he has a purpose and he's not just, you know, there's a reason, like, no one is a gangster because they want to be a gangster. What is behind him? What's causing him to do what he wants to do? What's, the, what's that driving force, right? So I took it and um, I gave him a purpose and I gave it, gave it a different look where um, they, you know, people saw it and they were like, wow, like, you, you really uh, broke the stereotype, you know, because this gangster had, he had, he was conscious. He, he just found himself in a position where this was the best way for him to to um, achieve his goals, and his goals his goals weren't actually selfish. It wasn't about him. It was about his community. It was about the next generation, you know. So I was able to do that, and at the same time, also place a um, a, 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 a black woman in a in a, in a uh, dominant role as she was the um, undercover cop, you know. So I placed her in there because you know, like in most uh, undercover cop movies you have the, the cop probably gets addicted to um, addicted to the drugs or something like that, where this one, it was, it was, it was love. It was, you know, the love between the man and, and the woman, both, both one and the same things, but going about it in two different ways, one legal and one illegal, you know, but in that same movie, the, the, the gangster, he was very knowledgeable. He wasn't a dummy. He was, he was well read and he made uh, he pointed towards like the Kennedys. The Kennedys, those were they were criminals who made their way into the White House. So you know, there's certain things I've placed in there to make people just to sit back and think and just look at how society is, is ran. You know, so um, and and it works. You know, it works. People people looked at it and they got them. They got it. They, they understood the um, the message and the purpose. You know, I I, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I, I definitely. I definitely didn't want to glorify that lifestyle, which I which I didn't, and um, yeah. Is, um, Demar, on that subject, so is that 
because obviously there was a lot of success and momentum with Diary of a Bad Man, well received. And I think a lot of um, your fans and followers and people who admire your work were looking for a, a, a second Diary of a Bad Man. But obviously, artistically, you've taken it into a different direction with um, Let's Make a Slave or Making a Slave movie. Um, was there rationale or reason or science behind that, or is that in the pipeline too? Yeah, that's, that's in the pipeline. I actually wrote part two, and we, was, so we were supposed to actually shoot it uh, this year with June. We were supposed to shoot it, but then um, just ran into, um, you know, when you get into the business part of this uh, film industry, and then when people want to pump money into stuff, then they want to change your narrative and take right. away the flavor and then go into a whole different direction. And I, I just wasn't willing to, to sacrifice what message I was willing to, that I want to put across to money. So uh, I put that, I put it to the side, to the side for now, and I'm gonna revisit it once um, I'm in the right position. But the um, part two is way better than part one because uh, you know I've learned and I've grown, and it's a it's a story that I definitely have to um, tell, which was, you know which is which was um, which is planned to be shot in Jamaica, you know. Wow. Yeah, and it's funny because the, the, move, the movie I was going to do before Making of a Slave was actually, another one was to be shot in Nigeria, and it was about human, the human trafficking, actually. <laughs> That's, you know, I have one, you know, about the human trafficking, the sex trade over there, you know, between, um, between Libya to um, Italy, because that's where the uh, sex trafficking is actually happening, but they have to pass through Libya, and they go through things in Libya, and then they get to um, Italy. And what, what a lot of people think is that they think um, that people are, like, being kidnapped and taken there. Like, people are going willingly, you know, because, you know, when you're in poverty, your choices, your choices, you know, are extreme. So people go there, and they know that they go there for to, set, to be sex workers. Some men are, some boys are taken for um, manual work, but um, a large amount of um, people taken are the uh, are women. They go there knowing what they're going to be doing. They just don't know the extent that they'll be having sex every day, like multiple times throughout the day. They just don't know that. So when they get there, they see the harsh reality. Yeah. And um, But people, they, they know. So I have that story. I just had to put that on hold. Well, real quick, I just want to point out that uh, there are a lot of people don't realize that there are uh, mm-hmm. over 3 million people enslaved today, and most of them are sex workers. Sex trafficking is a very big deal. And yeah. uh, and people don't realize that, but that plays into the movie that you're doing now, and the fact that uh, the making of a slave people go into this wilderness of a way out of a life that they think you know they need to get out of because of certain circumstances. I want to ask yep. David real quick. Um, David, uh, Demariah talked about uh, the reason uh, part two of Diver Batman had been made was because you know people trying to you know, in Hollywood, put the money in and try to change the product. You've worked in film and you've made, you actually have made films. Uh, so can you attest to that and talk about that? Uh, you know, people putting that. Oh hand yeah. In they're the always, <laughs> that's the big, that's sort of the big issue that I'm having now is like, well, how much do I just want to write stuff and hand it over and let people make it and then they can mess with it as much as they can. I take the money and run. Or do I do I try to have my integrity? Um, and and right now my integrity wins out every single time, which is why I'm broke and, uh, and 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 not moving forward. But there's always you know you know we've had conversations. There's there's a film project we've been me and my my business partner have been trying to get off the ground for a couple of years, and you know we we've got it set and we know that we could we can do this thing for for under ten million dollars, which is like. You know that that's considered a low budget movie in this day and age. Um, but part of it is, you know, we could probably we could know we could do it for less than ten. But whenever we go to in the meetings, they're like, it's not possible to make a movie for under ten million. This is what the studios say, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we've had meetings where we've come out and they're like, yeah, this is like a hundred million dollar movie. And we're like, like what world do you live in that this is a hundred million dollar movie? And they're, you know, they they offer all these things and, and then they'll say things like, well. You know, you've got it written. Your lead is is, is black as a black lead, and there's just there's no black actors within the price range that we could hire that could open this movie. Da 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 da. And then a movie like Get Out comes out, and and then that sort of changes everything. And then and then they rethink the conversation. But they, you know, going back to what was said earlier, there's a lot of stupid people in the world, 
<laughs> and and some of those stupid people are actually in positions of power that sure. have yeah. have a say over your your can have a say over your destiny if you're trying to work with them. And sometimes you have to work outside the system, and then but working outside the system comes with its own hurdles and its own obstacles, and and it is what it is. You know, it's it, it it's never easy. Um, but if it's in your blood, then it's in your blood, and you just got to do it. You just got to keep pushing forward, and 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 you you hit these obstacles. You, sometimes you get you get knocked down. Well, you just get back up. You know what I'm saying? And 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 hopefully there's enough time in between rounds for you to catch your breath, you know, so that the so that your your legs don't give out under you, you know, in the middle of the fifth round or something like that. So Definitely. But yeah, I I just gotta keep going, you know, that's the thing. It's always always moving forward. That's my motto. Hey, hey, yeah. I'm about as well. Could I have something that you've been talking about? I wouldn't say radical, but I guess different messages in the movies and You've obviously had a long career making, you know, in the movie industry, writing scripts and things like that, and comic books. Um, I guess in the in that world, that magic world of utopia, if you want, what would be that kind of movie that you wanted to make? You know, uh, Hollywood aside, and all the trappings that come along with that. You know, um, what would you perceive as that story you wanted to tell that you haven't had that chance to yet? You know, do you have such a story? You know, it's it's funny. I, I had a story that was. That was, and this is sort of a, a cautionary tale. I had a story that was a lot like Get Out, mm. um, um, it, but it was it was less horror and it was more of an action it, crime thriller. And and people kept telling me, oh, that's that's not a good idea. It won't work. It won't work. And I listened I listened to too many negative people for a mm. long time. And then Get Out came out, and I was like, yo. I, I should have done this, and 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 so this idea that I'd had that I'd been playing around with really for about almost ten years, but just never took it that seriously and listened to too many of the negative people. I didn't I didn't do it, and now I feel like well it's already been done. You know maybe maybe five years from now, um, I I'm I'm still figuring out the things that I uh, you know I'm working on a couple different projects right now that that I I. I for some, I can't talk about for various reasons, non-disclosure agreements and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I would, I'd like to do something like, I'd like to do something that just gives people a sense of hope. I, you know, I love action films, I love horror films, I love all that sort of stuff. But right now, there's there's so much negative stuff in the world. Um, I, I'm not joking. Like, I really want to do a romantic comedy. Uh, people people think that I'm I'm crazy when I say that, but it's like I I I'm actually developing a romantic comedy that's that's part like sci-fi thriller and 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 romantic comedy. I just saw that movie, The Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro's movie, and and it's nothing like that, but at the same time, it was like um, I was like, oh yeah, you can get away with doing this. You know, you can get away with having the monster fall in love with a woman and the woman fall in love with the monster and da 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 and, and I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. So I, I've, I've got this project. I've been developing it as a comic for about two years now and just been trying to find the right artist to draw it. And, um, and it's essentially, you know, uh, it's almost like reverse Beauty and the Beast where instead of it being the, um, the man who's a monster, it's the woman who's a monster. Okay, and it's about true. the dude, you know, and about about the romance that builds between them, and and because um, I, you know, when when a romantic comedy is good, it's good, you know. I mean, I I, I love the old like Cary Grant and Catherine Kraft and Hepburn movies from the the forties and fifties, and you know, from the eighties movies like When Harry Met Sally and stuff like yeah. that. So that's kind of what I would like to do, you know, and 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 and. If it was done as a film, I'd want to cast it unconventionally because usually, you know, we see romantic comedies and it's like if it's if it's a black cast, it's it's always black folks. Or if it's white folks, it's always white folks. But it's like why can't a black person fall in love with, you know, someone, you know, uh, you know, Asian American or, you know, whatever. It's it's like yeah. that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a little bit more of the universal humanity in it all. 
reflect the reality of the society we live in. That's true. Yeah. So, but you know, I gotta go, guys. I got. I yeah, got. Uh, I, I I I know I came on late and I'm leaving a little early, but I just want to thank you so much. It it it, it was a, it was a treat. I, I'm gonna check out your movies on. They're on Amazon. Yeah. yeah Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in my queue tonight and then watch it. That's what I'll watch on New Year's Eve because I ain't doing nothing on New Year's Eve. So, <laughs> thanks. So thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, yeah, right, David. I'll thank you, you for coming too. on, and uh, you have a happy New Year and uh, best to, to you and your family in 2018. Yeah, right. and 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 reach out again. I'll t- I'll come back on I, when I got some more stuff to talk about. I'll come back on. Will do. We look forward to seeing you. Take care. All right, take care. All right, take care. All right, bye. Demaraye, so we want to thank you for being on. Do you have uh, anything else you'd like to discuss uh, before we uh, head on? Oh, yeah, that's that's all, yeah. Thanks for having me. Like, you know, the the parts that I caught, I enjoyed. and very, very um, informative and, and motivational. So, yeah, real good. Definitely, and we can all all go to Indiegogo.com to check out and support the making of a slave, and also uh, DinnerandFilms.com. Correct? Yeah, that's it. All right, and uh, all right. Seth, you have anything else you want to say before we head out? Nah, just saying. Looking forward to seeing um, more Demorized projects, and good having you on the show, and good for having David Hi, on bro. a great show. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Thank all of you and uh, thank everyone for listening to Afronauts. We will be back in 2018 with uh, more new shows and uh, yeah. So uh, enjoy the new year and we'll send you off with some uh, some more music from our favorite artist, uh, Move Nito. All right. That's right. Peace. Peace. I rap rougher than a cage match and break a couple needles every time I need my name scratched. I can't fuck it with you lame cats with no claws, trying to get your paws on the same rats. Steady falling in the same traps, claiming that you ballin', but the truth is where your game lacks. Get fierce, it's Paul Pierce, and after a few tall beers, I'm all in. Which are sonically modified for the sole purpose of locating the dopest instrumentals under the Earth's surface. Surface. Hold the mic just like a serpent while kicking the flow. Only a genius could interpret. Perfect. Why you struggle just to make the grade? It couldn't stay afloat if you were working at the gay parade. My studio got a chambermaid and she bring us through that we guzzle like it's Gatorade. Then hit the trees like a lumberjack. Then rip the mic with the jaws of a thundercat. Hear me roar like Ryan O. Got a voice that's undeniably maniacal. As well as influential and articulate Certified to crush any instrumental distributed I can't be missed, you miscellaneous Hit by the unk and death is instantaneous And pretty much unpreventable To me being a whack MC is unforgivable I won't budge like a Texas judge Make you shoot yourself in the back like a dyslexic thug Mentally, I am iller than a paranoid schizophrenic serial killer Killer with a bowl full of raisin bran and an eye patch that I stole from a Raiders fan. I make the band, it don't make me. Every day my rhyme a crew, just like a late fee. Leaving you broker than a break beat. Living in a cart that you parked off of State Street. I know every way to freak a flow and a funk it up into every other speaker blow, blow, blow. Like a trumpet in the orchestra, torture you as I cast a spell like a sorcerer. Every aggregate is accurate, a master graduate before you got your first bachelorette. There ain't an MC matching it, when you see me, pass the mic, or I'm snatching it. The only bully with a vocab, and a tote bag, that can hide a giant notepad. If I ain't feeling ya, I'm killing ya, then sending your crew home with Mugnito memorabilia. Autograph and verify my authenticity, my style is a perfect mix of complex simplicity. With a touch of serendipity, intermittently into you feeling that it's meant to be. The entity with magnificent consistency, thumbing his nose at the industry, deliberately. They done making sure by the government, the mic too hot for you to rock without an oven mitt. My poetry is highly coveted, 